Caroline. Thank you. Caroline, pardon, Thank you for the invitation uh, to present the views of the CBA's uh, charities and not-for-profit section to you this uh, uh, to the Senate Special Committee this afternoon. The CBA, the Canadian Bar Association, is a national association of about 36,000 lawyers, law students, notaries, and academics. And an important aspect of our mandate is seeking improvements in the law and the administration of justice. And it's from that perspective that we appear before you this afternoon. The CBA section has members across the country specializing in all areas, uh, areas of charities and not-for-profit law and in every size of practice from large law firms to sole practitioners. With me is Karen Cooper, a member of the CBA section. And she will outline some key issues for the section and respond to any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation to share the views of the charity and not-for-profit law section of the CBA on the question of the political involvement of charities. Um, in light of the committee's work in reviewing the charitable sector and currently proposed amendments to the Income Tax Act to enable charities to engage more fully in public policy. Um, I'm a lawyer in private practice with a firm of Dre Chaptowitzer specializing in charities and uh, not-for-profits and I've acted for many of the organizations that have been subject to the audits with respect to political activities. Um, I'm a tax lawyer by training and also spent a fair bit of time with the Department of Justice and CRA so I did some time on, on that side of the, the fence as well. Um, and I teach a course at the Faculty of Common Law at the University of Ottawa on the law of charities and, and not-for-profits. So I, I get to hear every year of, about students' views on, on some of these same issues. Um, the CBA section has a long history of providing input into the development of policy and, and legislation affecting the charitable sector, including a submission to CRA on political activities going back as far as um, I found one in 2002 and I was reminded of some even before then. Um, more recently we wrote to both the Ministers of National Revenue and Finance to support the government's engagement through their mandate letters in reviewing the rules governing political activity with an understanding that charities make an important contribution to public debate and, and public policy. Um, we then made submissions to the consultation panel on political activities of charities and it wrote in support of the panel, particularly um, its fourth recommendation. Um, and as you may also be aware, um, many members of the executive of the section have already <laughs> appeared before you. Um, Susan Manwaring, Terence Carter, Cliff <coughs> Goldfarb, Adam Aptowitzer, um, Robert Hayhoe, you're hearing after me, they're all members of the executive of the section and so um, would have participated in the development of the section's views on these issues. Uh, afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and we often do and the emails have been flying all weekend as well. Um, uh, we're here and, and we are involved in the work of the CBA um, a section because as lawyers advising charities attempting to comply with the rules regarding advocacy or involvement in public policy, um, we've seen the application or not of these rules in real contexts on a regular and a context on a continual basis. Um, we experienced the chill on public policy involvement that preceded the recent reforms and have been fielding the calls from clients trying to understand the current proposals. Um, in our letter on the draft legislative proposals prior to the introduction of C86, the section clearly indicated its support for the overall approach of the proposals, including the repeal of the 10% limit on political activities, the clarification that a charitable organization must be constituted and operated exclusively for charitable purpose, so removing the reference to charitable activities we thought was a good thing, um, and the maintenance of the prohibition on partisan um, political activities. We thought that was also a good thing. Um, we were of the view that the proposals would provide charities with more freedom to conduct nonpartisan political act activities such as public 
policy, advocacy, and, and supported all of that. Um, we had some concerns um, with the draft legislation that finance in, in initially introduced and which remain with the introduction of C86. Um, they retained a reference in the definition of charitable organizations to all the resources of which are devoted to charitable activities carried on by the organization itself. In my experience, that is one of the most overused and misunderstood phrases in the statute with respect to the regulation of charities. Um, this language has created considerable uncertainty in the past and perpetuates unnecessary confusion about the distinction between a purpose and an activity that plagues much of the discourse surrounding the compliance obligations of charities. If it was on my wish list, you know, that phrase charity, charitable activity would be deleted in its entirety. You know, I, I, I'll say that constantly, and, but yet I'm a, a bit of a realist. Um, in our view, the definition of a charitable organization should mirror the definition of charitable foundation and omit any reference to charitable activities. Um, we also support the reasonable prohibition on partisan activities, but find the reference to indirect support or opposition problematic. The C86 says direct or indirect support. Um, we find the reference to indir indirect support um, problematic because it perpetuates much of the subjectivity and uncertainty that has created difficulty for charities in the past. Um, repealing the 10% resource limit on political activities which we support raises the question of whether there remains any limit on the advocacy or public policy activities of a charity. Um, we had some concern that you know, if you go back to the common law, CRA will rely on the common law definition of incidental and would arbitrarily determine that the level of public policy activities becomes such that a charity is pursuing an unstated charitable public political purpose. And that really what that is, it's the degree, the, this question of how much activity can you engage in. Um, in our view, the term incidental is vague and little case law actually emanates from Canada's courts concerning political activities. The section is of the view that the concept of subordinate developed by the CRA in the context of its related business rules um, is a better concept since that term is defined in more robust terms. But this is really more a matter of CRA interpretation and application of any proposed changes than about the specific wording of the amended, amending legislation itself. Um, we also noted in our initial submission to the committee that um, Canadian rules for carrying out activities either in Canada or elsewhere are very different um, from those of other jurisdictions including the US, the UK and Australia and some of your other witnesses have said similarly. Um, broadly, the focus of those jurisdictions is on ensuring that the purposes of the charities are promoted, while the Canadian rules focus on the activities of Canadian charities and, and other examples beyond the political activity context is on direction and control by charities of their own activities, business rules, earned income rules, all of those kinds of things. As a result, Canadian charities must, must expend considerable time and resources on compliance rather than on accomplishing their charitable mission, resulting in less effectiveness and efficiency. Modernization and clarification of the Canadian rules would significantly help charities to focus on doing good work rather than interpreting and applying overly complex rules. Um, thank you again for this opportunity, and I'll happy, be happy to take any questions. Thank you all for your presentation. It's uh, very helpful. Uh, we'll go to questions now. We're going to start with Senator Omdivar. 